Sometimes we haven't felt like we've been in church until you've been dancing so hard, your glasses fall off, and you can't find them. I don't think I've been in church unless someone kicks their shoes off and while they're dancing, bobby pins flying out, sweat slinging everywhere, hair flying all over the place, someone getting smacked in the face. I'm telling you, there's something about apostolic church that we don't leave anything at the altar. We give it all to God. I think if you're going you're to be worshiping either out in the world or you're going to be worshiping in church. Hallelujah. I remember one time, some, uh, it was in Arkansas, and, and, and some random uh, person asked me, hey, what church do you go to? Because I guess he saw I was all dressed up. So I said, I go to, the, I go to New, Life, New Life Church there off, you know, so-and-so road. And, and uh, he said, what, what do you guys preach? And, and some guy in there thought right to interject, oh, they're wild. Oh, that's right, we're wild. Hallelujah. I'm going to get wild for God every Sunday night, every Wednesday. I'm going to give it all to God because he deserves it. Hallelujah. You're either going to be getting wild here or you're going to be wild in the club. Hallelujah. I'm going to get wild in heaven one day. Hallelujah. I'm going to get wild at Jesus' feet dancing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is it all right if I just preach you like an apostolic? Hallelujah. I love it. Hallelujah. Let's turn to the Word of God. Acts 1 and 8. We're going to start in Acts. That's where apostolics get the majority of their text. Hallelujah. The beginning of the church. I just feel like preaching it tonight. I don't know really what's going to happen. I'm just expecting God to move by the time we leave here tonight. Amen. Does anyone else have an expectation that God's going to move in here? Hallelujah. If you have a hunger and thirst for righteousness, you shall be filled. Hallelujah. Amen. Acts 1 and 8 says, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be, ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem all and all in Judea and in Samaria. And unto the uttermost part of the earth. Amen. I want to preach to you tonight titled God's Witness Protection Program. God's Witness Protection Program. Amen. Y'all can be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. The Witness Protection Program, everyone's familiar with that, the normal one, was created in 1970 through, uh, through the Organized Crime Control Act. In a response to the mafia taking out key witnesses against them. They started to disappear here and there. So the U.S. Justice uh, uh, system was like, we got to do something about this problem. We got these witnesses here and they're disappearing. We don't know where they're going. And they're witnessing against the mafia. So we got to do something about it. So they created this program to protect the, the turncoats and the people that were turning against the mafia, and other organized crime. Actually, 95% of the people that are in or were in the uh, uh, witness protection program are actually former criminals. Now, the witness protection program, if you don't know, is, is provided only for witnesses whose testimony is determined to be essential to the successful prosecution of a criminal case and in which the witness's life or the life of his family is at risk the witness's testimony also must be considered credible and certain in coming, meaning that the witness isn't going to back out at the last minute. Now, the marshal service uh, is the one who oversees most of the program. And what they do is they'll actually provide, once you, uh, are, uh, once you voluntarily uh, go into the program, they'll provide you with a reasonable job opportunity. Uh, they'll also provide you assistance finding housing. They'll provide uh, payments to you, average of 60000 a year. Provide uh, new identity documents for the witnesses and family whose names are changed for security purposes. And also arrange for counseling and advice by psychologists if needed. Now, the witness protection program is not something you want to be a part of, really. It's for someone whose pretty much life is at risk. 
You're pretty much, you have a hit out on you. Someone wants to take you out. You're pretty much just trying to survive. You, you want to blend in. You don't want to make a stir. Your life is in danger. You want to stay under the radar. And that's very hard nowadays, uh, today with Facebook and Twitter and, and, and all kinds of social media where, you know, you just type your name in Google. Have you ever Googled your name? You'd be surprised what you find. If you haven't, you might want to. You might have a, someone stealing your identity or something. Now, so th this protection program still goes on today. In, 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 uh, to wrap it up, as far as the program, pr pretty much you get a new name, a new identity, new location, new house, and new job. Now, God has his own program, which is also voluntary. And the similarities, when I begin to look at the two, are very remarkable. You see, in Acts 1 and 8, it says, Ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and all the earth. Now, this is the classic underselling and over-delivery by God. And that's how he is. You see, he said, you shall receive power after the, you get the Holy Ghost. Then you'll be witnesses. So you get the Holy Ghost, you get the power, and then you get all the benefits of being in God's kingdom. Amen. You see, God always gives you his best up front. And then he gives you better things later on. That's what I meant. It seems awesome in the beginning. When you first come to God, you're like, wow, this is awesome. But it gets better than that. I remember someone talking about a, driving down the road and they seen a billboard. It was a beer billboard so advertising some brand. And, it's, and you see a picture and there's some guys out there by the lake. They got their boat. Looks like they're fishing. They're having a good time. And they got a you know, six-pack of beer sitting there. And they're just enjoying the scenic, and there's a mountain range, and it's just, you know, they make you want to look real appetizing, and oh, well, that's something I want to do. And then at the bottom it says, as good as it gets. And, you know, that's how the devil is. When you go out in the world, and you do things in the world, and you drink and all that, and you party, and you experience all the things of the world, if you've ever experienced those things, that's as good as it gets. Because once you delve into those things in the world, what the devil doesn't tell you is that you just experience the best. It only gets worse from here. You're only going to go further in sin. You're only going to ruin your life more. You're only going to lose more friends. You're only going to lose your reputation more. But with God, it's just the opposite. When you come to church and you come to an altar and all of a sudden, all the things in your life become so much better. But what you don't realize is that the longer you live for God, the only the better it gets, uh, more blessings you get, uh, more grace you receive, uh, the better you feel, the better friends you get. Hallelujah. God gives you better things. Hallelujah. The first thing I want to point out in God's program, God's witness protection program, is that you get protection. You get protection from harm or even death. Now, some of you here, when I preached last time about my motorcycle accident, driving 100 miles per hour around a turn, no helmet on. I could easily be in another statistic, but God saved me. You see, Psalm 61 and 3 says, For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. Job 1, 8 through 10, it says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth, uh, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Uh, hath not thou made a hedge about him uh, and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Uh, thou hast blessed the work of his hands and the substance is increased in the land. Uh, you see, God placed a hedge uh, of protection around Job uh, where the devil couldn't get near Job unless he went to God and personally asked to lay a hand on him. You see all these different accents that we've heard of. Uh, uh, and as of lately, uh, 
the people getting in accidents and being hit by cars. Uh, and we know that just uh, a little faster they could have been killed. Uh, a little hit on a different angle and they could have been dead. Uh, in a different time of day or different circumstance. Uh, we know their lives could have been lost. But time and time again, uh, we see these accidents happen in, within our church. Uh, but their lives are spared. Uh, and they walk away with maybe a few bumps and bruises and maybe a broken bone. Uh, but we realize that's a whole lot better uh, than them sitting up here in a casket and us mourning over their lives because I believe with all my heart that God provides and protects those who live for him. Yeah. Hallelujah. You get protection. Another benefit of being in God's protection program is that when we come to God and give him our life, uh, we become a new creature in Christ and behold, all things are new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are new. I said all things. And new creatures, they look different. They behave differently. You know, if you go, in, if you go to Africa, uh, observe a zebra, and then you go to Alaska, observe a salmon, they're two different creatures. That's not, you know, that's pretty basic. I think anyone can make that distinction. Because what happens when you come to God, uh, uh, you see yourself, you're out in the world, and you're, you dress differently, you talk differently, you, you look differently. Uh, people have a different vibe about you even when you walk in a room. Uh, but when you come to Christ, uh, all of a sudden things start changing from the inside out. Uh, and that God that's living inside of you is shown from the, in, from the outside. Uh, and it's like observing a zebra and a salmon. They're two different creatures. Uh, you're not going to find a zebra trying to swim upstream uh, to produce uh, offspring. It's not going to happen because it's the same with us. A new creature means a new creature. Right. Hallelujah. I think it's about time that some of us start stop being ashamed of who we are. Right. If you're apostolic, you're apostolic. Just go in all the way. Stop walking the fence. Uh, stop trying to live one way on Sunday, another way Monday. Come on now. Oh, we we got to be proud uh, because if we don't if we're not proud down here, uh, God said in his word that, that he would turn us around at the gates of heaven. Uh, so you better get used to being stared at. You better get used to being talked about even uh, because we're different and that's the way we are and there's nothing we can do about it uh, and the world's just going to have to accept it. Cuz I'm not changing for anyone. Hallelujah. I'm only, I'm only here for one reason. That's Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In God's prote protection program, you get a new mind. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. You see, the, the, when you have the mind of Christ, uh, when you come into God's witness protection program, you, you not only have a change and you become a new creature, you get protection, but you also get a new mind. You get the mind of Christ. Uh, you see, when you get the mind of Christ, you start thinking differently. You see, everything comes from the mind. Everything you do, every action, every word you say, every place you go, uh, every decision you make in your entire life, it will start right here. So it's pretty much important uh, that what you have in here is aligned with the Word of God. Uh, because if you don't have what, what's right up here, the rest of your life is going to look like a disaster. But when we come to God, uh, he, when we come out of the water, we receive the Holy Ghost. Uh, he he puts the mind of Christ in us uh, so we start thinking differently uh, we start liking the things of God uh, we don't enjoy the things we used to enjoy we don't like laugh at calamity we don't laugh at things that are wrong and, and terrible jokes uh, but God puts the mind of Christ in us you see when you have the mind of Christ you start 
You start dwelling on, on heavenly things. Uh, you start thinking about things in heaven. Uh, you start thinking of uh, uh, ways you could witness to somebody. Uh, you don't think about how I can get revenge on so-and-so uh, or how bad my situation is. Uh, but you cast those thoughts aside uh, and they start feeling like you're creeping up on you. You say, in Jesus' name, uh, I'm not going to dwell on the negative. Uh, I'm going to dwell on heaven. Uh, I'm going to dwell on not what was, uh, but what can be. Uh, what I can change now who I can witness to uh, how I can give uh, in Jesus name hallelujah God has always been changing names in the Bible I noticed a trend after a while studying that God is in the name changing business one thing you get in God's witness protection program you get a new name See, if you read in Genesis 17, 5 through 6, uh, God is talking to Abraham at the time, Abram. And he says, neither shall thy name anymore be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee an exceeding fruitful, and I will make, thee nations, uh, make, make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. You see, God, when he's about to do something awesome in someone's life, when he's about to change your life forever, when he's about to do a mighty work, uh, what he does is change your name. And we observe here in Genesis that Abraham was once called Abram, but once God gave him the promise, once God saw his faithfulness, he says, you know what? Uh, your name's not going to be Abram anymore, uh, but I'm going to make many nations out of you. I'm going to make you a great people. So in order to do that, uh, I'm going to change your name. We see the same thing in Genesis 32, 27 through 28. And God changes Jacob's name to Israel. He said unto him, uh, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, uh, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and hath prevailed. You see, Jacob, uh, he had one of those attitudes where he valued the birthright, uh, where he had one of those attitudes where I'm going to do whatever it takes to get a blessing from God. I'm going to wrestle this angel all night if I have to, uh, and I'm not going to let go. Uh, it was only at the point when he was physically handicapped that he let go of the angel. And so God was like, you know what? Uh, I see your dedication, and I'm going to do mighty things through you. Uh, so in order to do that, uh, there's going to be a complete change that comes over you. And your name is now Israel because the nation of Israel is going to come out of your bloodline. Uh, even today, we see the nation of Israel and what has God has done with him and how he is still blessing them today because of Jacob's faithfulness. You know what? And we're going to, we ourselves will also get a new name one day. Revelations chapter 2, 17. He said, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. You see, this is something that's going to happen when we go to heaven because God has done such a mighty work. He's going he's gonna to say, you know what? Uh, you've proved yourself faithful. You, while on earth, you went through a lot of trials, uh, a lot of valleys. Uh, you've had a lot of tests. Uh, you've been through a lot of stress uh, in different circumstances. Uh, you've had a lot of ridicule. You've even had some persecution. Uh, so you're, as your reward, uh, well, you're going you're gonna to be in heaven also for eternity. But also, I'm going to give you a new name uh, written on a white rock uh, that no one else will be able to know but you. Because God's a name changer. Hallelujah. But in the end, instead of just surviving mafia hits, we get a reward. Which I'll just parlay this into one of my last points with being in God's witness protection program. You will also get relocated to a permanent residence. In God's witness protection program, uh, we're going to go to heaven one day. That's the ultimate reward, really, when you think about it. 
besides all the benefits, uh, my pastor, uh, my old pastor in, in Paris used to say, uh, he said, one of his things was, all this in heaven too. All these blessings, uh, all this what we ex- get to experience at church, uh, all this uh, wonderful blessings that are poured out, all these miracles, uh, all these great friends we have, uh, and this wonderful life we get to live for God, all this, and we get heaven too. See, uh, the longer you live for God, the better it gets. Hallelujah. Matthew 5.12 says, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. John 14, 1 through 2 says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Uh, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go, prepare, I go to prepare a place for you. You see, right now on earth we live in a house. Most of us, I don't think anyone lives in a mansion here. But God is also in the upgrading business because once we get done living for God and get all these blessings while we're down here, we get to go to heaven forever, but we don't just move into a new home. We get to move into a mansion that he's prepared for us because God is constantly upgrading his people. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm telling you, you want to be a part of God's witness protection program. But there are some differences as well as similarities. similarities. For instance, in the witness protection program that the U.S. Marshals run, the whole point of it is to stay under the radar. You don't want to be noticed. You, you, you don't want to be the sore thumb that sticks out. You don't want to ever show up on the news for anything. You want, uh, you want to live a, a, a very discreet life from that point on. But it's just the opposite, actually, when you join God's witness protection program. Because we're all about sharing shining, and shouting. Hallelujah. Because God gave us a commandment. He gave us a great commission. He said, go out and baptize. Go out and share the faith. Preach the gospel. Share your testimony. Share your faith. Uh, we're not we're not charged to share our faith. F- share what God has done in our lives. Uh, we're not supposed to be keeping a secret. Uh, we're not supposed to be flying underneath the radar. We're not trying to fit into this world. Uh, but we're trying to tell people all around us that, hey, I go to an apostolic church. Uh, have you ever heard of apostolic? Well, let me give you a Bible study because I'll tell you all about it. Uh, because God has uh, some wonderful things on earth while you're here. Now we're supposed to share, but we're supposed to shine. God said you're a, a, we're supposed to be like a, a city on a hill shining our light. Uh, we're not supposed to cover it up. Uh, we're supposed to shine our light in the darkness. Uh, we're supposed to stand out. Uh, we're supposed to shed light on some misconceptions of the Bible. We're supposed to be sharing what we know. Hallelujah. When we walk into uh, an atmosphere that's dark, and it's just nasty. People ought to know there's something different about us. People ought to know that the light of God is shining inside of us. Uh, we ought to be able to shine that light in the darkness. We also need some differences. We ought to be shouting. And I know I'm preaching to the choir on this one. But just for all those visitors, if you haven't noticed, we love to shout. Hallelujah. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Uh, Hallelujah. We love to get with it in this, in this church. Uh, we love to shout. We love to raise our voice in praise. Uh, we love to lift our hands and wave them around. Uh, if you haven't noticed, we even like to dance a little bit uh, and jump up and down. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. One more parallel I'd like to point out on the witness protection program fact sheet if you look it up they boast that no witness that has followed their guidelines and stayed in the program has ever been harmed or killed I'd like to tell you in Isaiah 6 and 1 in the year it says in the year that King Uzziah died I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple Hallelujah. If you don't know what that means, I'd like to give you a little explanation right now. What does that mean, his train? Was a train in the temple? No. The train of a king, his robe, actually. What would happen is when a king would go to war with another nation, they would actually, 
when they would defeat the enemy, they would go out and not only take the spoils of war and take everything that oh, the enemy had and take that, but the king would also send out his warriors to go find the other king after he's been killed, take his robe off, and he'd say, give it to me. I want that robe. Because what they would do is after the victory, they would grab that robe of that king they just defeated and go ahead and get his men to, to sew it onto his robe. Hallelujah. So victory after victory, a king that was victorious uh, and had won many battles, he would get their robes and he would sew it on. And then he would get another victory and get the robe and sew it on the end of that. Uh, and before you knew it, uh, his train uh, was, was several feet, uh, several robes long. Uh, and the longer a king's robe was or, or his train, uh, the more victorious that king was, the more powerful he was, uh, the more victorious he was, uh, the more battles he has won. And we read in Isaiah that God's robe in the temple, his train uh, was so long, uh, so lengthy uh, that it filled the entire temple. There was any room to walk around. Uh, he couldn't go anywhere because his train was all over the place uh, because our God is a powerful God. Our God is victorious. Uh, our God's never lost a battle. Uh, our God has never lost on the battlefield. Uh, you serve a victorious king. Uh, his train fills the temple. He's almighty one. Uh, he's powerful. You don't serve a weak God. You serve a God who's gone before you and has won the victory. Who has gone before you and won the battle. You don't serve a God who has just a little bitty robe. His train fills the temple. And I'm here to tell you tonight that when you're God's witness protection program, you're going to win. You're going to win the battle. Don't feel defeated here tonight. Don't feel like you got to lay out on the ground and defeat. God has gone before you. He has won the victory for you. He's won the battle for you. Because God's never been defeated, and he never will be. Hallelujah. We already know how the book ends in Revelations. We know what happens at the end. Uh, God wins, uh, and he reigns forever. And the devil's going to be cast into hell. And then people down there in hell, they're going to look down, and they're going to see the devil. Uh, and they're going to be, who is this that we fear so much? Uh, who is this that we thought was so big and bad? Uh, he's just a little weakling. Uh, he's just in heaven right now burning uh, and paying his punishment uh, because God has the victory. Hallelujah. You musicians may come now. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Hallelujah. You know what? Sometimes I just feel it's appropriate when you, when you know you've won the victory already, like we know we have, because I've just told you, his train fills the temple. He's the most powerful king. As a matter of fact, he's the king of kings. Every king, he's the king of them. Every leader, he's the leader of them. There's no one higher than the King of Kings. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. But sometimes I think it's, it, we're, it's an order for us to shout the victory. You know, I can remember sometimes when I've been in some kind of competition, like a football game or something, actually playing in it. And I made a huge play, and, and, I, and I caught the ball, and I got the interception. I ran in the end zone and got a touchdown. And that feeling was so great at the time. It's amazing how you feel. You probably know you felt that. It, is, it, it was overwhelming circumstance, something that the odds were against you. You didn't think you had a chance to win. You didn't think you were going to come out on the other side. But then all of a sudden, you come out and you're victorious. And you're standing on top. And you got the victory. And you got that feeling. You got that surge of energy in your body. Who know, who's felt that? It, it doesn't come very often. But sometimes I feel like tonight, I think it's, it's about time we just give God a shout of victory, a, sh a shout of triumph. Hallelujah. Why don't we do that? Hallelujah. I don't care what people think anymore. I'm going to praise God anyhow. I know how it ends. I'm in God's kingdom. Go! 
God is a ruler. He is the king of kings. Uh, his train fills the temple. Can we give him a shout of victory tonight? Come on, let's come to the altar. Let's worship God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We're going to hold you down. We're going to lift our voice in victory. We're going to make your praises loud. The enemy has been defeated. And death couldn't hold you down. We're going to lift our voice in victory. We're going to make your praises loud. The enemy has been defeated. And death couldn't hold you down. We're going to lift our voice in victory. We're going to make your praises loud. The enemy has been defeated. And death couldn't hold you down. We're going to lift our And death couldn't hold you down. We're going to lift our voice in victory. We're going to make your praises loud. Shout on the God with the voice of triumph. Shout on the God with the voice of praise. Shout on the God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Shout on the God with the voice of triumph. Shout on the God with the voice of Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Shout out to God with the voice of praise. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Shout out to God with the voice of praise. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. Your name up, shout on the God with the voice of triumph, shout on the God with the voice of praise, shout on the God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up, 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 we lift your name up. 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 Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 God's given us the victory tonight. Hallelujah. Oh yes, God. Yes, God. He is worthy. He is worthy tonight. Uh, he. Oh, no, no. Hallelujah. It's open enrollment time. God's witness protection program. Hallelujah. I want someone to come to the front who wants the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. If you say in your heart, I don't care what the world does. I don't want to go where the world's going. I want to be in God's kingdom. If you haven't received the Holy Ghost, I want you to come to the front. And we're going to pray for you to receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. It's time. The waiting is over. We don't have time to wait anymore. This world is wrapping up. Uh, things are coming to a close. Uh, in these world events, we have to get serious. Uh, hallelujah. Do I have anyone who wants to receive the Holy Ghost tonight? Uh, I want you to come to the front. Hallelujah. Lance. Awesome. Hallelujah. We're going to pray with Lance. Our brother right here, we're going to pray. Can I get some elders? Can I get someone to help pray them through? Hallelujah. That's it. We have three. Uh, Hallelujah. God is going to fill you with the Holy Ghost tonight. I believe it. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, let's go ahead and worship and provide an atmosphere right now. In Jesus' name. The enemy has been defeated and death couldn't hold you down. We're going to lift our voice in victory. We're going to make the praises loud. The enemy has been defeated and death couldn't hold you down. We're going to lift And death couldn't hold you down. We're going to lift our voice in victory. We're going to make your praises loud. The enemy has been defeated. And death couldn't hold you down. We're going to lift our voice in victory. We're going to make your praises loud. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. 
Shout out to God with the voice of praise. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Shout out to God with the voice of praise. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Shout out to God with the voice of praise. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. 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 Saw the Lord seated on the throne. He was clothed in glory. And seated high in the train of his robe. And the angels gathered round, gathered round him, and they cried, You are holy, oh so holy, you are holy. Oh! 
And he touched my lips with the burning fire, and the pillars shook, and the angels cried, "You are holy." Oh. someone right now. If you're just standing there, go ahead and find someone to pray with. Hallelujah. We should be encouraging one another in the altar. This is where it happens, right here in this place. Uh, hallelujah. God's doing some things in this place. Uh, he's doing some powerful things in people's lives. Uh, hallelujah. Encourage them. 
Pray a blessing over that person near you. Hallelujah. Bless their lives. Uh, pray victory over them. Uh, in Jesus' name, uh, the people of God are going to be triumphant in these last times. Uh, we're not going to suffer. Uh, we're not going to be put down, uh, but we're going to be triumphant. Uh, we're going to be victorious uh, in these last days. Uh, revival is here. Uh, God is pouring out his spirit. Uh, the latter rain uh, is greater than the former. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, Lord, I pray a blessing over everyone here right now. Lord God, equip them to be witnesses. Uh, Lord God, embolden their spirits, God. Uh, Lord, stir up the gift inside of them, Lord God. Uh, in Jesus' name.